Hello, I'm a Bullet student tutor, and today we're going to be talking about the structure of a Petrarchan sonnet. So there are three main types of sonnets, Shakespearean, Spenserian, and Petrarchan, which is also known as an Italian sonnet. Today we're just going to be focusing on that third one. So this is the structure of a Petrarchan sonnet, and keep in mind when I'm explaining this that these rules are here in poetry to be broken by the poet. But by knowing the space structure, you can analyze why the poet is breaking the structure and what meaning they're trying to convey. With that said, a Petrarchan sonnet is typically 14 lines, where the turn or volta, which is the dramatic shift in the poem, occurs on line 9. Consist of two stanzas, which is a grouping of lines, with one octave, which means eight lines, and one sestet, which means six lines. And so those stanzas are broken up by the rhyme scheme, which I'm going to explain next. So this is the rhyme scheme of a Petrarchan sonnet. The octave is A, B, B, A. A, B, B, A, and the sesta is C, D, E, C, D, E. Now, if you're not familiar with rhyme schemes, I'll make it clearer in a second with an example. But basically, the last word in each line gets a letter, and all the other last words in the following lines get the same letter. This is uh, the typical meter of a Petrarchan sonnet is iambic pentameter. So iambic pentameter consists of five metrical feet in each line, which basically means a foot is one an unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable. So this is an example from a Shakespearean sonnet. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? So shall is unstressed, I is stressed, and so on. And so it creates this rhythm when you read it. So now we're going to apply all that, what we've just learned, to an example of a Petrarchan sonnet by John Milton, when I consider how my light is spent. Again, you can see the iambic pentameter when I read it, and I've marked that the stress syllables in that first line to help you break it down a little bit clearer. And I've also highlighted the word, last words in each line to make that rhyme scheme really clear. The words highlighted in yellow, spent, bent, present, prevent, all rhyme, and so they all get the letter A. And you do that with the following last words in the line. So wide, high, chide, denied, they all rhyme, they get the letter B, and so on. I've also pointed out the octave, which is the first eight lines, and the sesta, which is the last six lines. I hope you have a better understanding of the structure of Petrarchan sonnet so that next time you see one, you can really analyze it and see if that poet is breaking any of these rules and why they're doing so. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.